Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, so, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this discussion about automating the discovery of uh, microservices architecture in the IWS and discussion about why we are doing that. So first, uh, let's get to know a little bit of each other. So my name is Milos Ivanovic. I work for Zalando. As uh, your lovely colleague said, I am a lead product manager within information security department. And I'm driving the portfolio of products that ensures security and compliance of all software that we have in Zalando. Uh, the central topic that I'm working on is uh, IT asset discovery and visibility. So that's it about me. I would like to know a little bit uh, about you. So tell me who is here from the information security? One, two, okay, three. Uh, who is facing the challenge of uh, IT asset discovery and visibility? Okay, now this is now the topic for everybody. All right, so uh, let me just quickly tell you what we are going to cover here. Um, so in the first part of the discussion, I will tell you a little bit about our company. Uh, then I will speak about the um, fast-growing IT landscape and the uh, challenges that we have with that. And in order to address those challenges, um, we are partnering LinaX and, uh, using the new cloud solution. And I will tell you a little bit more about that and how far we went with that initiative. Uh, now, picture is telling a thousand words and video is telling even more. So now let's have an overview about Zalando in 60 seconds. So, as you probably know, Zalando, or Zalando, Zalando is a German e-commerce company based in Berlin, uh, Europe's biggest online fashion retailer. It's a cross-platform online store that sells shoes, fashion, and recently we have started with the beauty uh, program. Our vision is to connect people with fashion. So we went from startup in 2008 to a multi-billion euro company. Now, just to tell you about this growing IT landscape, I would just first let a little bit uh, sneak peek into the numbers. So as you could see from the video, we are operating in 17 countries. We have more than 29 million active customers. They are browsing from the assortment of uh, four, four 150,000 product choices, and we have about 2,000 brands. We have probably uh, more brands than any other fashion retailer has. At the moment, we have um, more than 300 million visits per month, and we have more than 50,000 employees. And that leads us to techies. We have more than 2,000 people in tech. So we have seven uh, international uh, tech locations, and our technical headquarters is in Berlin. 
So this picture here is actually a picture of our tech platform back in the days when we were small. So we had uh, a dedicated team for every single component. So we had a shop team, mobile team, launch team, database team, logistic team. And uh, one of the most important teams for us were platform team. So platform team was dedicated team which was responsible for providing resources. So server, fire storages, live deployments. Back then we had like uh, two uh, data centers and we had around 50 tech teams. We call them delivery teams. Now, that approach, as you can imagine, uh, doesn't scale anymore. Because today, we have more than 350 delivery tech teams. And our poor platform team became overwhelmed with requests from uh, many teams. And basically, we, uh, the request starts uh, piling up. And it took like several weeks to, to have a feature release or to get a new resource. And in order to overcome that issue, we moved to cloud, and uh, we become able to provide uh, infrastructure very fast with that. And that also drives the new responsibilities to the tech teams. So they become their own DevOps teams, and they be become responsible fully for their own development, deployment, maintenance. So as you can see on this picture, they got their own little software development life cycle. So we were proud that we achieved that they got feeling like they're in a small startup again, and that they need to take care about everything. And remember this picture very well. Uh, I will get back to that later. So uh, this uh, uh, opportunity came with the great price of actually growing our uh, assets. So at, at the moment, in cloud, we have uh, 570 accounts, AWS accounts, and 180 Kubernetes clusters. And that also caused that our uh, internally developed applications uh, started growing very fast. And recently, just in a few years, we went from 500 to more than 5,000 active internally developed applications. So, the question is how to tame this chaos. But not just that, uh, the challenge is also, I mean, it became the challenge to really identify who is the IT asset owner. Uh, why that? Because since we are constantly growing fast, uh, we are getting a lot of requests for the team changes all the time. So in, in my department, we have the team who is in charge for the team changes. And within one month, we get around 100 requests per team change. Of course, there are sometimes small changes, like people are moving from one department to another, leaving the company, coming to the company. We are splitting teams. We are um, merging teams. But anyway, with all those changes, it was really becoming like challenging to, to figure out who is responsible for which application, for which database, all the time changes. So this is the biggest change, then also asset classification, and what was the most important for us, how to identify security risks. So someone would need some compass in that jungle, and remember this also. Um, so since as a company, we are very uh, customer focused, and in the central department, uh, our customers are internal customers. So basically, we as a team within information security, we are serving our internal customers. And our biggest customers are actually members of the information security, which is now around 50 people. And we are planning to double uh, by the end of the next year. So maybe 100 or 110. So uh, for the information security, basically the most important thing is visibility. So IT security starts with the visibility. And here you can see this is the NIST framework, where basically you first need to identify what you have, then to protect, detect, 
respond and recover. So what we did as a product team uh, within the information security, so we started with product discovery. We started with interviewing in information security teams and trying to understand what are their visibility problems. So we were asking them, okay, imagine you have a supercomputer that can tell you anything that you want to know about our assets in Zalando. So what, do you, what would you like to know? And then they said, okay, I would like to know uh, all AWS accounts from Team X. Okay. And uh, all applications that are running over there. No problem. Show me the list of applications, for example, that they are consuming a lot of resources. Why, we asked. They said, big applications tend to be risky, so we want to dig in and to see how secure they are. Or, for example, uh, show me which teams are deploying to certain sub Kubernetes cluster. Or show me all applications from that cluster and all vulnerabilities attached to those applications. So, and so on. We had like 50 such requests, and it became challenging how to classify them, how to prioritize. So we divided this challenge into the three problem areas, because if you really look, I mean, this is, this is our vision on, on that, and I would also like to hear your opinion, that basically we have three problem areas that we are solving here. So first problem area is something that we call foundation, and over there we are basically answering on three questions. So what assets do we have? Who is the owner? And what is the status? So is it some application? Which team is responsible for that? And is, for example, is it active or not? Because it is not, we are caring less. Uh, in the second problem area, we actually solving a problem of how to attach the metadata to the assets that we, that we have discovered. So in the foundation, we have IT assets, we have owners attached, and then now we are, at, uh, we are at, uh, assigning attributes to those assets. And attributes are also different, depends on the use case, depends on the, on the team that we are serving, so we will have different criticalities for the application. SRE will say, oh, this is important application, then we have a classification based on the data processing, and then we have also something like red, orange, green, yellow uh, data, and therefore the assets are also uh, taking that class. Then uh, vulnerabilities, then different kind of the relationships, like uh, relationships between applications, components. Uh, now imagine if we, if we have identified everything in the foundation part, and then we assign all kind of metadata that we discovered, then basically the third area is just how to expose that data to different stakeholders in our company. So here we, we are creating dashboards, high-level reports for the top management, uh, data quality insights, various uh, helpers to the teams that are actually cleaning the data. And then below those uh, problem areas, you can see that ch challenges that we are uh, facing with in each of those problem areas. So in the first problem area, we are facing challenges with the modeling, ITS discovery, and the ownership, like I mentioned before. Uh, with the metadata, the challenge is how to collect them. Uh, you can collect them in many ways, but it's really a challenge. Lack of processes <coughs> and initial data quality that is usually not uh, on a very good level. And then also with the reports, we have a vari vari variety of stakeholders and figure out what we are going to deliver first for, for whom. And also to maintain the data quality on a high level. So. What we did in the first area, how we tackled the problem, we basically we tried to identify what business terms do, uh, do we have in the company and to align how we understand them. So basically, we were speaking with uh, uh, many teams to identify what for them means application, what is component for them. So we come to some conclusions that, for example, typical application in Zalando has like front-end component, back-end component, and database, and so on. 
We did the alignment, we did simplification, we reduced the scope in order to finish the task quickly, and we came to some comprehensive glossary. Uh, apart from glossary, uh, we used another parallel initiative in Zalando. Uh, we have Zalando Tech Raider in order to learn about our tech stack, in order to learn what we have, what technologies, and you can see yourselves, this is a publicly available overview of all technologies that we have in Zalando, if you click on that link. Now, since we, we, we created the glossary, we got the tech stack, uh, we used that in order to, to design the data model and to design the basic uh, architecture for our uh, IT asset uh, visibility system. And that system we called Compass. Now you remember that Compass that was helping us to figure out where we are in the jungle. So that was the inspiration for our brand name. And of course, since we are putting Z in each title <laughs> in the company, this is why we have Compass. Uh, of course, Compass is uh, powered by Linux. Uh, and uh, and uh, in uh, partnership together, we are developing this uh, tool that we are using for the visibility. So uh, our first um, initiative uh, started with manual efforts. So what we did, we assigned one team to go around the company and to collect all assets. So they were just going around asking teams, what do you have? Uh, I have this, this, this. What do you have? Schnitzel, Pommes, okay. What do you have? And then they are really collected everything and uh, entered everything in the, in the system. But as you can guess, on this scale, such uh, approach failed. So basically, we have tried with the automated way. So automation is a key. So we became so obsessed with the automation so much that our engineering team, we start calling Autobots. And another uh, story about our obsession with the automation is also our, uh, our code name for this project, which is Megatron. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you can ask our CISO about that, but actually I had a lot of uh, uh, challenges to explain to the people what Megatron is, because they were asking me, like, what is that Megatron that you're working on in the information security? So I then, I have found the simplest solution and explanation, like, Megatron is mega security visibility tool, which is Compass. So I will then show you what we have done so far. Uh, so by placing Compass, uh, backed by Linux, in the center, we have started with some automation already. So we have started with the teams, because as I said, we had a lot of team changes, and it's really, really hard uh, to, to figure out what is happening. So basically, we have implemented uh, integration with the SAP. And uh, however, they change uh, in PO, this is our HR department. However, they change uh, teams that, that is reflected to, the, to the, our system. Then uh, we invented the internally central, central uh, registry for internally developed applications. And basically, we also developed some kind of barrier that developers cannot deploy anything if they don't firstly register an uh, application in that central registry. So we also implemented automatic synchronization from that system, and we started joining applications and teams. We also did uh, some database scanning automatically. We exposed API access to other internal teams so that basically they can use the system. Uh, and also the approach is that we will continue in that way. So we are experimenting with some uh, also Python scripts that we are executing manually, but this is basically our approach, and this is what we have done so far. Uh, and since the problem with the big information security team for Zalando was pretty, pretty hard to address, so basically we chose smaller legal entity, which is Zalando Payments, 
So Zalando Payments is like mini Zalando. So they have only 11 uh, tech teams. They have 250 uh, active applications. So we thought, OK, with Zalando Payments, we can actually test our prototype faster. And now you remember that picture, this software development lifecycle. The idea is that basically everything that we do, discovery, metadata, uh, assignment, we do through this uh, software development uh, lifecycle. So this is the assumption that we need to prove. And I forgot to mention that uh, apart from uh, automation, having uh, processes in place for this story, we assume it's, it's, it's really important. And this is also what we want to validate with payments. So basically, they have designed process for security and compliance task. And by observing that process end to end, we want to make the, the minimum of uh, that use case that we can actually support process on each step then to test and iterate and optimize and then start identifying all uh, parts where we want to do uh, automation. So this is, the, this is the starting idea. And uh, in that uh, adventure, we are not alone. We are backed by Linux uh, and also the partner Cloud Docket. So we joined uh, to the Cloud Beta program this year in uh, Q2. Uh, and since then, we had the several workshops. We have learned about the idea, how Linux is doing uh, that. So probably you had a chance to see this uh, today, earlier. There is a dedicated uh, cloud analytics workspace where the cloud is uh, scanned. And from there, uh, basically, we can synchronize what is of interest into our uh, extended uh, workspace. But uh, I will tell you now what we have done so far. Uh, so basically, we have already uh, implemented uh, one uh, scan. Uh, and we, we did scan of one of our AWS accounts. And we wanted to see what is in there, like what really we can get there. And the results are uh, pretty impressive. And uh, I will share this with you. So basically, this is one of our application full stop. Uh, owned by uh, our engineering team. So we just wanted to see what is happening there. And also, we are the most relevant guys to say if this is uh, correct or not. And then basically, we got, uh, when we click on that uh, application, we can see uh, all uh, cloud components identified. And one of them is a uh, load balancer. Uh, you can see that. Uh, it is automatically identified type of uh, load balancer, which is an uh, elastic load balancer. And the second thing that was uh, identified is region. So we have, uh, we have uh, Iron as a region. So yes, it's true. Our application is running there. Uh, then this part, organizational unit, uh, this is actually something that where we need uh, some improvement. So currently, this is a AWS account and the number where this is uh, deployed. So here, we would like to see actually really connection with the real team, with the organizational unit. Uh, but we, we are going to work on that. Uh, then um, we have uh, automatically identified tech category, <coughs> which is load balancer. Uh, Another example of another component that was uh, identified was uh, EC2 instance. Uh, here we can also see what is uh, automatically recognized. So basically, we have the, um, uh, that uh, information that this EC2 instance is using the one Amazon volume, this space. Uh, then also, what we have else, uh, this is uh, uh, again. Um, automatically detected uh, component type, then location as well, because sometimes uh, might be different. And again, uh, this uh, improvement uh, about the organizational unit that we need to work on. So the next steps would be actually, because of this payment use case, we now want to do the Kubernetes connector. We want to scan all applications in Kubernetes. And we want to uh, assign vulnerabilities and metadata that are coming from uh, systems like SonarCube or uh, Clare, and to see how that works together. 
Uh, also, we want to identify big resource consumers, as I said. Uh, they are very interesting for our uh, security teams. And uh, we want to connect all of that with our organizational unit. So this is what we are planning. And to summarize what we have uh, tackled today, uh, taming the IT landscape chaos is possible. And we believe that we are on a good track with that. Uh, when you're tackling problems like this, uh, break down problem space, attack piece by piece, but keep that customer in mind. Uh, Automation is the key, and definitely, as you could see with uh, this Linux cloud solution, uh, a lot of things are uh, already possible. And that would be it. Uh, for the end, I would just say, uh, if you look at this uh, graphic, uh, this was basically vision of our headquarter back then. And if you visit Berlin and uh, Mercedes Plus, you will see that our headquarter looks exactly like this today. So we have a vision about our IT asset visibility tool, and we believe that it will follow the Zalando steps. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Milos, for being part of our EA Connect Days 2019. Um, of course, we have some time left for a Q&A session with you, and yes. uh, I'd like to invite our guests to ask some questions. Thank you. Works? Yes. Oh, nice. um, thank you very much for the presentation. It was really nice. Uh, I, I hope I understand right um, that you got the teams of the organization from your SAP HR, right? Yes. Um, what do you get from there? Do you get uh, individuals and how do you model it inside uh, LinaX? Is it via user groups or how do you manage the uh, indi individual? <laughs> So I will try to explain the question. Uh, so, but also one of our main engineers is sitting behind you. <laughs> so you can speak with him also afterwards. But uh, so basically, yes, we scanned the, the, the full organizational unit from the, from the SAP. Uh, we also have one additional system, which is a tech held up, where basically we have information about user group IDs but we managed to find a way how to integrate those two. So basically, if you go to Linux, you will see Teams, and then when you click on the team, you have the information actually where exactly that team is in the org structure. So there are like parent teams, child teams. Uh, we placed uh, team members in the subscription section uh, over there, so basically over there we have team members. We have also uh, next to the team member the assigned roles from uh, SAP, so you can see if someone is lead and what is his uh, role, like uh, software engineering lead, for example. We have team email, uh, email, member emails, team member emails. We have also team email uh, that is coming from that uh, another system. Uh, then on the front page, we have uh, all team identifiers. We have SAP ID, we have that additional ID that we are uh, using internally. Um, I believe that's it, uh, if I didn't forget anything. Do, do you mind to use the microphone if you would like to add some information? Thank you very just, much. Just, just one sentence. Um, it, it's modeled as user groups with subscriptions. Yes. Short answer. <laughs> Short engineering answer. More questions? Yes. Maybe you can grab that mic. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your uh, presentation. That was very good. Thank you. One question I missed a little bit is Security Operations Center or SEAM. I mean, it's not really the audience, but coming from cybersecurity. <laughs> Okay, so is that integrated? Is this basically yes, the question? yes. So definitely, we we had the let's say the user requests, user stories from uh, SOC team, uh, and one of the requests were, was also this uh, assignment uh, vulnerabilities to the application. So basically, they really would like to see um, they would like to see the vulnerabilities. They would like to see also. 
uh, what is what would be interesting uh, to model uh, in this uh, use case with the payments is to if we have uh, initial criticalities of the assets, so let's say if we have a red asset that is processing uh, personal data and green assets that is not processing any sensitive data, and then you have vulnerability of same severity assigned to both assets, then we could prioritize easily and push the one that are actually red with the severe vulnerabilities to be sold first. Uh, also, they have another use case is um, connection with um, teams and uh, uh, images that we are uh, deploying and versions that uh, that those images are using because if they're using an uh, old version, they would like to contact teams and to update that image to actually protect more. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes? Well, first of, all, first of all, thank you for your presentation. It was great. Uh, it's really impressive how do you have your architecture in the, in the cloud. Um, I would like to know if you deal as well with kind of legacies, and in this case, how do you do it? You mean the legacy? Uh on-premise of the yeah. things that were. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, our pain. <laughs> so basically, uh, we are tackling legacy environment piece by piece. So basically, some of them are so huge projects that we are really organizing global projects to, uh, to settle and to dissolve and to, to move to the cloud. And we have also initiatives, internal initiatives, so uh, currently, we have also initiative to move everything to Kubernetes, and basically there is a whole team that is taking care about that. So they are informing other teams, going after them, helping them, uh, providing more support on the Kubernetes side. So basically, even not just data, so data centers definitely should go, but also we want to um, move away from those single AWS accounts and to move to the Kubernetes. So this is also our goal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, great presentation, thanks. Uh, I have a question. So you said that you started with uh, um, Zerando payments as a first. Have you been able to do it across the whole organization or it's still? We are enabled. I mean, we are a member of the information security team, but since we have, uh, so for Zalando SE, uh, this unit uh, currently of about around 50 people, we are in charge for the for the whole uh, uh, whole company, but uh, since, like I said, it's really challenging to to visit all uh, our stakeholders and really to approve uh, or, or uh, to validate our hy hypothesis. Uh, this is why we have chosen to start with the smaller scope mm -hmm. and to really uh, quickly close all iterations and do this end-to-end -end use case so that we can actually validate our assumptions faster. And if it works, then we can really then just scale up to the big uh, uh, information security department. And second part of the question. Uh, so what's your experience right now with the quantity or quantity of uh, information which you have right now? Is it uh, easy to read or do you feel that is a uh, uh, but do, do you mean on the experience with this uh, particular project or? This particular project, yes. Yeah, uh, well, so far, as I could demonstrate, uh, we were amazed that basically in the first run, uh, and this was really, we have completed this first part last week, that we could really identify uh, an asset uh, application and all uh, components related to that. Uh, we have also seen that it is possible to identify vulnerabilities, and in the next iteration, we really believe that we will have all together. So not just uh, detected components, but also detected vulnerabilities attached to asset, attached to the team. And then we can test with the information security teams and immediately do the prioritization, push tasks to Jira, for example, and then they can start solving. And in, the, in that third problem, uh, area we will create these uh, reports where we can show how many of vulnerabilities uh, automatically were detected uh, in one month and how many of them uh, were solved. This is the idea. 
Thanks again for the presentation, it was very good. And I have one question, please. I get the information security use case for that. Do you have beside that other groups in the company which need that detailed information? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, we have tech controlling, for example. Uh, they also have, we have uh, a huge use case with the third party uh, applications that we are uh, collecting at the moment manually. Uh, we have also a few systems that we would like to integrate and to see uh, basically uh, to merge everything that we have manually collected and automatically. Uh, but also many other use cases. Um, this is why we expose the API on top of uh, Linux backend and uh, so that we can even uh, do uh, internal marketing uh, through developer newsletter and then all teams, uh, they can start using uh, our API. So for example, currently we have team that is solving incidents. Uh, they're using our uh, API and um, browsing this uh, team structure that we already uh, created. Uh, also, if they need any asset information, then they can pull. But uh, just to say, in order to also to tackle some problems first, we choose to focus. And uh, from the product perspective, this is always important step to uh, isolate one customer segment, then uh, conquer all their use cases, and then move to the next customer segment. So internally, we are observing all our customers like that. So also start small and then extending. Milos, we have another question over here. The Abgeordnete nimmt sich kurz das Mikrofon. Hello, thank you, uh, thank you, Thomas. Milos, I like the picture of the jungle. And my question <laughs> is, does your organization, maybe together with uh, Lena X, include also a dimension for data protection? Because we learned you have 28 million customers. My daughter is a customer of you. <laughs> yes, we, we have a dedicated team that is currently uh, doing that data protection job. However, we are also listening in uh, what uh, Linux uh, has to uh, provide. Uh, I have seen some use cases, uh, and probably you will see on this uh, conference, but definitely if we spot anything, then we can also include this uh, team, uh, the name of the team in our company's data governance. So basically we can then offer also a Linux solution and put on their table so we are also internally promoting uh, Linux as a partner. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe one more question out of the audience. It doesn't seem like. So Milos, uh, I think you and your team, you're tackling the challenges very well. And we both are going to meet again tomorrow and uh, our cloud panel discussion, right? Yes. So whenever um, you're, feel free to ask some uh, questions or talk with our uh, guests maybe later on, and otherwise we will chat tomorrow in the afternoon. Thank you very much, Milos. Thank you also, and thank you, everybody. <laughs> and for all of you who has similar challenges, please approach me. I would also like to ask you some questions. Super cool. Thank you very much.